Happy Friday and thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Kaylin Johnson and for Journey Taylor today kicks off Eclipse weekend. So let's check in to see how the roads are holding up right now. There doesn't seem to be any major delays across the capital city. If you're getting out soon, you may experience the typical lunchtime rush. We're going to take a look at I 430 at the Big Rock Interchange and it just looks like your normal run of the mill noon on a Friday. Of course, as those visitors start to come in, we want to keep an eye on that. It's the calm before the storm, so be sure you buckle up and take it easy out there. Arkansas State Police wants to keep things under control leading up to Monday. Traffic has become a major concern, as you can imagine, with a massive influx of people expected to flock to the state. And according to authorities, the storm has already started brewing. We've seen a few out of state vehicles already. Uh, we would assume they're here for the eclipse, but uh, I noticed yesterday afternoon on my way home there was uh, a lot more traffic than normal. And if you find yourself on the road as totality happens, RDOT wants to remind you not to wear your eclipse glasses while driving. Don't look up and do not pull over. And meteorologist Nathan Scott here with us now on to weather. I really wish the eclipse was today. It's beautiful outside right now. It is perfect <laughs> viewing conditions out there this afternoon. I wish the eclipse was today because I had no pressure. High pressure is a story providing us with clear skies. Unfortunately, high pressure will not be sticking around as we get closer and closer to eclipse day. This morning, though, it was chilly. You probably need to grab the jacket. 32 was the low in Clinton. 34 in Mina dropped down to 42 here in Little Rock, but we've recovered very nicely with all that sunshine. Temperatures have warmed up into the upper 50s to a lower 60s. 71 already in Texarkana, and also there's not much of a wind. Now that wind will pick up tomorrow, but that's going to bring in some warmer temperatures. 71 the high today here in the metro 72 in Russellville 77 in Dequeen 66 in Batesville and here is your weekend outlook where the temperatures continue to climb up into the low to mid 70s on Saturday upper 70s on Sunday small chance of scattered showers and that front is going to be the culprit to determine on what the sky conditions will be for eclipse day and I will have that eclipse day forecast coming up. Nathan, thank you. The Board of Corrections chairman found himself in the hot seat during an intense meeting on Thursday. State lawmakers came down hard on board chairman Benny Magnus. It comes over a decision by the board to hire an attorney for a lawsuit against Governor Sanders and the former prison secretary. During the meeting, Magnus took full accountability for how things have played out thus far. If there's any error in this process of this procurement document, it rests on me. I'm the chairman of the board. I'm the last one that touched it. I'm the last one that sent it to staff. If there's anything in error, it falls on me. The Supreme Court will hear two cases regarding the Arkansas prison dispute. And Churchill Downs is facing a lawsuit by the owner of an Arkansas Derby winning horse. This after being dubbed ineligible for the Kentucky Derby. That lawsuit comes as Zidane Racing Stables is criticizing the ban against trainer Bob Baffert, calling it illegal and baseless. The winning horse Medina Spirit was banned due to alleged use of illegal medication on racing day. Churchill Downs responded to the lawsuit, saying it has no merit. And developing this afternoon, a woman remains in custody after an FBI raid on Thursday. According to, to court documents, Chandler Carroll is being held on federal charges related to fraudulent activity. Reports blame her for finessing $2 million in COVID relief money. And the alleged $2 million comes from money that was part of the CARES Act, which was meant to serve as relief funds for keeping businesses afloat. Carol is accused of lying about information regarding four businesses, including employment and payroll numbers, all part of a plan to get four different PPP loans. And to national news, the U.S. putting a microscope on Israel, who say they're taking action after an airstrike took the lives of seven charity workers earlier this week. The Israeli government taking swift action overnight, approving three new humanitarian corridors into Gaza. That request coming from President Biden during an intense phone call with Israel's Prime Minister Thursday. The White House says they're urging Israel to do a better job with protecting civilians. If there are not changes to their approach, um, it is very likely we're going to change our approach. 
President Biden is also calling on the prime minister to conduct an immediate ceasefire into war efforts. And we continue to receive new information regarding Baltimore's collapsed bridge, which fell after being struck by a cargo ship. So far, we've seen plenty of bird's eye video from the wreckage, but now we're getting a look at what lies below. Officials say those underwater conditions are what's hindering their cleanup efforts. President Biden will be in Baltimore today for a firsthand view of the area, and he plans to meet with the families of workers who died in the collapse. They were hard workers laboring in the middle of the night to repair potholes on a bridge that tens of thousands of travelers crossed every day. That wreckage continues to block the Port of Baltimore, which is responsible for nearly $80,000 of international cargo in the last year. Well, the Summer Olympics are heating up in just a few months, but a slip up in Paris is causing a bit of a buzz on social media. Ian Lee shares more on the Elite Splash. The Olympic Aquatic Center is the pride of Paris, with a price tag of more than $160 million. It'll host swimming, water polo, and diving this summer in front of 5,000 screaming fans from around the world. And its grand opening made a big splash. Just not how officials intended. Alexis John Dar and other Olympic divers showcased why they're representing France in front of President Emmanuel Macron. But when John Dar stepped onto a lower board, he lost his footing and took a tumble. While he got top marks for bad timing, the 26 year old handled the flop swimmingly, mocking his misfortune on social media writing, I slipped, boss, and telling fans, thanks for the support, for your information, my back is fine, but my ego, dot, dot, dot. Jean Dar will return to that three-meter board at the Summer Games, looking to turn a tarnished start into a gold medal finish. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. And something else that has everyone talking, we're just a few days away from seeing which four teams will go all the way in the NCAA Women's Tournament. South Carolina taking on NC State in their first game, and Iowa facing off against UConn. These games are expected to turn up the heat for women's sports. So I think you're going to see also a beautiful style of basketball. Teams that cut, teams that pass, a game that's probably really high scoring too. And South Carolina on the brink of history, but NC State they can score, they're fun, they're athletic. It's going to be a really, really tight game, I think. South Carolina is going into the Final Four undefeated. They have a season record of 36-0. And as for the men's Final Four, those games are kicking off tomorrow, starting with North Carolina State versus Purdue at 5 o'clock, and Alabama tips off against UConn just before 8. All four teams hoping to punch their ticket into the final round. So the eclipse will have just about everyone looking to the sky this Monday. Ways you can avoid causing damage when trying to catch a glimpse. Next in your Eclipse Central, Nathan. And we're enjoying this Friday filled with sunshine, but looking off to the west into the Rocky Mountains, that's our next system. That'll bring rain to the picture on Sunday. And also that system could be the troublemaker for Eclipse Day, meaning we could have some clouds. And I'll have more on that forecast next.